morning of the prayers, this, uh, our, our parish cycle of prayer, we, we're this month focusing on administrative stuff. So we're thanking, pe thanking people who do the sort of unseen work. And, and so we thank the people in charge of the library. We thank the people who put together the newsletter. We thank you know, the people who put the mailing out. And that was all good, but I did, I did thank, I did think, actually think and thank are related words, by the way. Um, uh, I did uh, think that we should have offered a word of thanks this morning, especially to the people out shoveling and sweeping. They have been working their rears off this week. They were early out there. They were up this morning doing it, too. I'm sorry? They were out there early. They were out there early this morning sweeping, in some cases, because it's, it's, it's shallow enough. Um, I really hate having this door closed. I understand why we're doing it um, to keep people safe, but it's, it, it feels like an unwelcome sight, and I, I hate it for that reason, but we want to keep people safe. So, so we've got it roped off this morning at least, um, but um, you know, as it's safe to navigate, we'll, we'll leave it open, of course, but on a day like today when it's just coming and going, the snow is... Now the sun's out. Now the sun's out. But you can't tell minutes. because of those chairs. But yeah. be that as it may. Um, so, so that word of thanks. And while I'm on words of thanks, uh, thanks to uh, Julie and all of the elves. Many, many, many elves who put together the uh, St. Nicholas dinner the other night. If you weren't there, um, well, you missed a lovely, lovely evening. There are pictures up on the bulletin board over there if you want to take a moment to look at them. There's a few. Um, and um, in addition, of course, uh, there are the uh, other Advent things on that other bulletin board. Um, Gay is, is doing a wonderful job. I enjoy seeing what Gay posts, because Gay is also doing this Advent word oh, thing so where you, you take a word so and you think fun. about it and you figure out how do I put into, into a picture uh, in an abstract word. And it's, and it's mm -hmm. very challenging some days. Um, um, tomorrow, I, I haven't a clue what I'm going to come up with. Tomorrow the word is rely. How do you how do you capture a word that says rely? So we'll see, we'll we'll see. Um, but that's a um, that's an aside. But but again, the thanks for the Saint Nicholas Elf. So, oh, I, the re, the connection is today. The word is glow, and so that picture you see with uh, Rusty in the bottom corner of the bulletin board there, um, I cropped it and uh, and I have a glow uh, of candlelight and a glow of warmth and a glow of good cheer all of which were the experience that we had on, um, on St. Nicholas dinner night this past Wednesday. Um, and then I also want to say a word of thanks, lest I forget, and I encourage you to do so when you go into church later. A word, they're not here, but a word of thanks, well, except for Bill. Uh, Bill sang with the choir last Sunday for Lessons and Carols, but a word of thanks to everybody involved. In, in that it was a lovely service, um, not without a couple of hiccups, but we, you know, that's, that's helpful. We learn from those. And uh, next year when we do it, it'll be done even better. So that'll be great. So we can't have too many more choir members. We're running out of space up that there. Was, that was a lovely so problem to have last Sunday. Probably, yeah. uh, if the attendance at the early service is any indication, we won't have that problem this morning. <laughs> <laughs> the early service attendance officially was 29. I think they, 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 they I think you forgot a couple of folks that came in late. So I'm going to make it 31. <laughs> oh, I, I think you changed it. Oh, no. <laughs> sorry. There you go. It was, it was a small that, crowd. That, Marie, I know, is, is under the weather, so, so Pat came, came along. Um, uh, Barb, my Barb, is, is under the weather today. She won't be in later today, of course. I think at, at 7.30, people poked their heads outdoors, and the snow was coming down hard at 7.30. And I think if you, had, if you were at all iffy, you said, I'm not going out with that. <laughs> and that's a good call. Okay. Um, today, we want to do a, a financial snapshot and um, actually, Barb, Barb gave me an idea for how we could better do that because my, my concern when we do something like financial snapshots is I put a lot of numbers up there and, and you just, your eyes glaze over and your mind goes somewhere else and you just can't take it all in. And I get that. And we're going we're gonna to try and keep it pretty simple and straightforward, but you're still going to glaze over on me, aren't you? <laughs> so Barb, Barb and I were talking about this uh, earlier in the week and, and she said, well, you need to tell it as a story. And so I'm going to be the storyteller today. <laughs> Mind you, I'm the storyteller. I'm not the one who's actually done the work. The people who have done the work are people like Bill um, and Jan and Joan and Bob Selder, uh, the people who really study this stuff carefully, and the finance committee. 
Um, so, uh, so there's a lot of people who do the work. I'm just telling the story this morning uh, by a series of slides, and, and I'm going to try and do it in a somewhat creative way. And Helen over here said she was going to sit in the front row so she could heckle. Echoing is fine. <laughs> you don't need to heckle. You don't need to, but we're going to tell a story. And so if the, tell, if the story obliges you to, to react or respond or heckle or jeer or cheer, you know, whatever the story brings out is what you're free to give. Is it once upon a time? It's going to start out once upon a time. Once upon a time, and this is where Barb and I departed a little bit in our plans for presenting the story. Because the way Barb wanted me to do it was going to be way too hard. She wanted me to tell the story as if it were all a, a, a parable or a metaphor. Once upon a story, time there was a, a family, da 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 da. No, I'm going to tell you the story of once upon a time there was a church, and it's not going to be just any church, it's going to be this church. So the financial snapshot is, is a perspective on the story we tell. Okay? So, once upon a time, there was a church, Trinity Episcopal Church, in downtown Bend. <clears throat> and what was going on there? Well, to get, I've got to give you a couple of characters. Okay? These are the two characters we need to pay attention to. Now, today, we're really going to focus the story on the operating budget, not so much the balance sheet, but do you understand the difference in these, in these concepts? The, the operating budget is the money that comes and goes. So in your home life, you get income coming in every month, and you have expenses going out every month, right? And the balance sheet would be the equivalent of whatever value you have in your house, in your checking account, your savings account, whatever else on any given day, right? Clear enough? That's the difference. Today, we're going to tell the story about the operating budget. The money that comes in and the money that goes out, mostly, that's the story. A little bit will let balance sheet come in and have a, have a part to play. Okay. Now, before we, um, we tell the story of, of who we are, financially speaking, today, um, we need to know a little bit of a, about the story of how we got here, Okay, where we've been. So here we are, and I'm not going to go back long, long ago. Well, let me, let me back up though. Before I, before I show you those numbers, who, remember who we've been as a church, and who we've been as a church started before I got here. Reality, of course, is it started before any of us got here. But before I got here, I know part of the story was firestorms, as I sometimes have called it, um, that preceded my time here with my predecessor in this office. I'm not casting aspersions on anybody. I'm not saying anybody did anything right or wrong. I'm just saying, simply acknowledging that there were hard times in our relationships within the congregation once upon a time, not so very long ago. And then there were fires, the literal fires uh, at Trinity. Um, which obliged lots of disruptions and lots of mayhem and lots of adjusting and lots of scrambling um, and lots of work to build things back. And that brings us then to where this congregation was at the end of 2014. At the end of 2014, total revenues coming in, total of $361,000, less assessments and outreach. I'm going to come back and talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so don't. Don't let me get away without talking about it. Um, for a net revenue, this is the money you actually could spend. Um, if you will, this is a little bit like you get your paycheck, and at the top of your paycheck you see you got this much, and then they take out everything else that comes out of it. It's a, it's a lot like that, actually. And this is how much money you now have to spend for rent, or for your mortgage, and for your groceries, and for your utilities, and for anything else you want to spend money on, okay? But the expenses that year came in a lot less than what you actually took in, which means at the end of the year, you had 43000 almost $44,000 more. You we didn't have a full-time lecture. Well, I'm going to come to that. <laughs> but it's really good news. So how's the congregation feeling at the end of 2014? Pretty good. Yay. In fact, that wasn't the first year you'd ever had a surplus. You had had surpluses in other years before, and it all accumulated 
to $85,000 in the bank. And it just happened because income came in more than expenses. Cheering is appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> I love the explanation. <laughs> you know what's coming. <laughs> now, it's a story, right? So if the story just goes on like this, it gets boring after a while. So there's a shift in the mood, right? <laughs> and then we looked at what was going to happen in 2015. And this is the what we called then the first cut. We said, yay, everything's going Oh, crap. <laughs> and there was much wailing and gnashing of teeth mm. at the end of 2014 into the first week or two of January of, of 2015 as we looked at what the revenues were likely to be and we kind of thought they were going to be pretty flat. Um, and uh, our expenses, not so flat because you already got ahead of me. You knew how the story was going to play out. <laughs> <laughs> the story was going to play out that, um, yeah, you had a surplus before, but you had a surplus, you realized, because you weren't paying everything you needed to pay. I came on board, for better and for worse, <laughs> because you had to pay a full-time rector. And, and, and with that, because you weren't paying somebody who had retired, you had to pay for all the benefits, the health insurance, and the pension plan, and all those other things that, that get added to a, a package like that. Um, and, yay, you get to move back to Trinity, yay, you get, oh, you have to pay for it now. <laughs> so, um, in almost all of 2014, the expenses of Trinity were being borne by the construction project, because it wasn't occupied until December of, 24, of 2014. So, suddenly, $44,000 in surplus becomes negative 55 plus thousand dollars. And as I say, and there was much wailing and gnashing of teeth. What to do? Do you remember what was decided? Mm -hmm. This is what was decided in the end. This was the budget that was actually presented to the annual meeting. Again, oh wait a minute. The first cut said 360,000, not quite. The final budget has 395,000. Let's figure out how to increase revenues, we said. If we get more money in, we don't have to make reductions. Because, well, I'll come back to the because in a moment, okay? So what, was ha what happened was, um, people like Bill, and at the time, Rusty Merritt was treasurer, um, and other people involved in this whole process said, you know, we have some money we can, we can, well, we have some special gifts that we know are coming. We can draw on some money that was called a challenge grant that was in the bank. We could draw on that this year. And the foundation came up and said, you know what? We can give you more this year than we were able to give you in previous years because we've got our, got our ducks in a row. If Dave Carroll were here, I'd, I'd, I'd introduce that character in the story, too, but he's not here. Uh, but who else is on the foundation board? Anybody else? John is. John, John's not here, he but anybody here? here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Pat has been on the, on the foundation board. You were at the time. Um, so the foundation said, we can, we can give you some extra help. And then we came up with this income to be determined. <laughs> it was mystery money. But if we did all of this, we can see this number grow. And then we said, you know what? We've got $84,000 in the bank. How about if we use some of that? Not all of it, that would be foolish. But some of that um, to help cover the costs. So we decided we would do that then. And we said we'd take a third. And we could do that for up to three years. Okay. Um, Father Jed, when is the end of the three years? Well, we said we could do that in 2016 and in 2017. So for the next. Okay. The next um, so now this is by way of comparison. So here was the 24, 2014 mm -hmm. actual, and this is the 2015 budget. So mm -hmm. a big increase in income. So you have that 
increase there. Expenses, a bigger increase, and at the end of the year, a $28,000 deficit. That was what we allowed for in January 2015, almost two years ago now. Okay? Two things I want to say about that, because I think we, are, we sometimes forget. The decision to do it this way was a decision not to live within our means. But it was a strategic decision. Because the feeling was, we are so happy to be back at Trinity. And we are so happy, I'll speak for myself, to be at Trinity. That is, to have a full-time rector at Trinity. We're so happy to have everything the way it needs to be, we can't afford to cut and slash the budget. We've got to play this out and see how it, how it goes and how it grows. So it was a strategic decision not to cut expenses that might undermine the positive feeling of where we were at the end of 2014 going into 2015. Okay, does that sound right to you? All right. That was the first thing to say. The second thing we want to say about that was it all depended on some optimistic projections. Where's that mystery money going to come from? Are we really going to receive all these different receipts from these different places. Some felt this was unrealistic. <laughs> Who's raising his hand? Anybody else want to raise their hand about whether or not that was a realistic plan we had in January 2015? Two. Maybe a third. Four. You weren't even here, Bill, but okay, of course. <laughs> okay. Optimistic. Some felt hey, hey. Well, guess what? We did even better. It's a happy ending. It's a happy ending. Okay. We did even better than we had budgeted. So again, this is the budget we had for the begin at the beginning of 2015 with those big increases to revenue and a deficit of 28,000. Let me tell you how how it all. These are the. A little bit of detail. I told Bob Selder during the early service he wouldn't be happy with this presentation because this is not going to go into the details. This is as detailed as I'm going to get today. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. But I think it's helpful to have this much information for a few reasons. You're welcome, welcome. Um, so we have pledge income we projected at 300000 and change. Okay. Plate and sustained income. <coughs> that is income from... Well, the offering plate's pretty obvious, right? That's money that comes in that we don't really know where it comes from because it doesn't. It comes in typically as cash. Or it might come in from somebody who visits and leaves a check, but they're not going to be here the next week. Or there are people to sustain giving, people who give money consistently but decline, in some cases adamantly refuse to fill out a pledge card. Okay? But we know it's coming, so we can, we can kind of budget on it. But that's always a guess. And that's where you can make some overly optimistic guesses that'll bite you in the end, right? Um, there was a special gift that year, in January of that year, $19,000 and change. We were advised by the family, that person had actually been making large and generous gifts for a number of years, but we were advised in January that year, that's it. Don't plan on that again. Okay, but we had it this year, so we're going to plan on it this year. Okay? Uh, this challenge grant, this isn't quite right. I don't know what the number is. It was 90 some thousand. It was a little under 10,000. I don't know why it's 10. I think there's something else hot, hidden there, but that's okay. The point is, it was regardless about $10,000 that we transferred in from another fund, which we would then deplete. It will not be available in the future, but it was available that year, so we used it because we didn't want to. We didn't want to cut off the energy, right? That was a, that was the, the strategic choice. The foundation said. Where's the foundation? Yay, the foundation said we're going to give 9700 this year. I think in previous years it was less than 1000 maybe. It was, a, it was a big jump. And they're going to say, and this is predictable income. That's a huge help, right? Um, and so that's where we came up with, again, this net, um, this, this, this $92,000 in assessments and outreach. We're going to come back to that in a second. Net operating income of 303, or three, yeah, 303. Net less expenses of 331 and 7, so we have $28,000 in change. That was always the plan in 2015, to have $28,000 in change taken out of our reserve funds so that we didn't have to make cuts. Bill, you want to talk about the assessment? 
Uh, yes. <laughs> Is there like a chart? That goes there might be a chart that goes with this. <laughs> uh, and we don't want to get too sidetracked on this, but the question comes up from time to time, you know, what is this assessment? Where is it going? What does it get spent on? And basically, and I'll, I'll say this word, but maybe you're not going to like it, we get taxed 22.5% on every dollar of income, which means that when you give a dollar, you're actually giving 78.5 or 77.5 cents, whatever. So, uh, of this money, I really wanted to let you know where it's going to as far as the diocese is concerned. And most of this is pretty obvious, but this is out of your dollar, a nickel of it goes to administrative expenses, that's like photocopy and some other miscellaneous things. Maintenance expense, two cents. Now, keep in mind, this does not include the school at Cove. This is just the diocesan portion of this, and I'll make one comment on that in a minute. Uh, 13 cents goes to the national church, and the diocese actually gets charged 22 and a half cents on every dollar they make, and it goes to the national church. So that's what that 13 cents is. Ministry and support, oh excuse me, offerings, you know, things like ERD, uh, make up just a penny out of that, and actually it's 0.93 or something. Ministry support. I, was a little, I didn't really understand this when we got into it, but, you know, essentially some of this comes back to us. Uh, it assists with the, the diocesan commissions, uh, it goes to consultants and speakers, canonical training for priests. I mean, so a small percentage of that actually makes its way back down to each of the individual churches. I would guess, Bill, that one of those and it's really minor on that list, but I would guess, for example, EFM, because as a diocese we participate in education for ministry, which means when we offer it at the parish level, we get to do so more affordably. It's that it kind of stuff. Cuts it almost in half. Cuts it in half. So it's that kind of stuff that because we're part of a diocese and we subscribe to some things that locally we're going to get some benefits. Uh, there are some other things, and we may not take advantage of them all, but that's, I think, part of what would be hidden there. Where, where would convention expenses go in there? Uh, convention and journal actually are in that piece. Probably there too. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, look at something here. Bear with me. We got some Okay. Uh, bishop salary and expense. That's pretty straightforward. Twenty-two cents. Personnel. And this is where I wanted to talk just briefly about the school. Uh, <clears throat> Up until 2016, expenses for the school are handled in a separate accounting system and not included in the diocesan budget. In 2017, there will actually be a line item in the diocesan budget that includes the school to make that more transparent. And if you look at those numbers projected for 2017, the school on all of its major expenses actually breaks even which surprises me. But the piece that's not included is a portion of the director's salary, which is all included, the director's salary for Cove and the school, which is all included in the personnel expense up here. So a few pennies out of that personnel expense actually go to the school. Don't know how much it is. I think that hopefully they'll try to break that out for next year. So. That's kind of it. Any other questions on this? One final comment. You're so blessed to have this man because if I was doing this presentation, you'd get three slides. They'd be loaded with figures and you'd walk out with them. What the heck did he talk about? Well, as I say, I'm just a storyteller, but Bill and others are the ones doing, doing the, the rough work. Yes, sir. I hate to say it, but you say how a dollar goes and you total that out. All up, it's a dollar one. Bill, <laughs> yes, it is because I did not include those that point nine and the one point three. It's a rounding error. Just one. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ken. You're welcome. Hey, he's paying attention. Yeah. Boy, I guess so. That's it was my idea to put the cent sign instead of the percentages. 
Thank you. Yay, Helen. Thank you. 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 Um, you know, this number here comes off all of your revenue, and it is like getting your paycheck and having things deducted from your paycheck so that you have this net at the end, okay? And I understand why we resent having those deductions, but the reality is, if I don't get paid, I don't get this. So I want to get paid. And by the same token, in that respect, in that equation, you are the employers who pay the church, I mean, those are bad analogies, but you get the point. But don't not pay us <laughs> because you resent the taxes. Pay us because we need that income in order to live and to thrive. So, so I, you know, we sometimes get people who say, well, I'm not going to give to the operating money because the diocese, well, you know, I'm, ti I'm tired of hearing that excuse because you're killing me. <laughs> kind of literal. You're killing the church. When you, get, when you get picky and grumpy about paying the assessment, we need the income so that after we pay our due on other expenses, we have the income that lets us live and thrive. So, yes ma'am? Well, and, and those, those taxes, if you want to look at it that yeah. way, do go, as he pointed out, even the, the diocesans, come, some of them come back to, you know, the people who are, putting their time in on some of these committees, uh, it pays for their gas to get there to the, the meeting. Right. And nationally, they're working on, and I thought that the assessment had gone down to 19, yeah. 19 instead of 22 uh, nationally, but uh, that some of that money goes for outreach kinds of uh, projects. So right. it's all the work of the church. Absolutely. It isn't, it isn't going off to yeah, absolutely um, and and I, I will say that I, I um, a former parishioner of mine back when I was in Missouri she was married what was it? I think he was the county assessor it was an elected position she so she is she was my senior warden she was married to the county assessor and his and his first name was slick <laughs> <laughs> and he was elected and re-elected because in spite of the name he really wasn't but these were these were now I'm, I'm gonna admit it these were these were liberal tax and spend Democrats, okay? But uh, Sharon and Slick insisted that the money we pay in taxes is, is the best money we could ever spend for ourselves. Because it's what builds the roads and what builds whatever safety nets there are in this society. It's what does all the good that we do as a people. And in the same sense, that's what, it, that's what our, our assessment does. It makes, it, it makes us better people. Uh, let me, I gotta hand over your cat, yeah. Well, I just wanted the opportunity to say, back on a prior slide, when you showed the amount the foundation gives. Uh -huh. I don't think it's out there for people to understand how important it is to be giving money to the foundation. Yeah. Because it is there. So. I am trying to shine a spotlight on it a little bit today because it is critically important to just our very operations here. I mean, it's a small piece, but it's, it's still a critically important piece. Um, and uh, we don't probably spend as much time talking about the foundation as, as the foundation would like, but they're, they're talking about talking about it more as a start. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's a diocesan assessment, that's most of that, but there's also another uh, percent of the net operating income that we just give away. And that's just a, a, prior, a prior decision of the vestry to do so, and until we make another decision, that's what we're always going to do. So we're not going to hang on to and hoard all of it, we're just, some of it we're just going to give away. Some say 1% is really paltry. We, we asked for 5% initially. Yeah. Didn't get it. There, there are places <laughs> who, who have put the challenge out to the congregation. You ought to get half of what you bring in away. Now, if we were given half, I would tell you that that's got to include the assessments too. But still, if we give 20, roughly 23% away, if we were to see that grow by 27% more, we got some work to do. But just think about it. Just think about it. All right, back to the story. So that's, uh, that was the budget. And this was the, the mystery money, was the 15000 which turned into that summer, if you recall, my singing 
Summertime and the gift <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? <laughs> was that heckling? Was that heckling again? It's winter time now. <laughs> well, but, but in the summer of 2015, we, we said we got to take seriously the fact that we promised that we were going to do extra $15,000. And it wasn't we, that is, it wasn't me and Bill, remind you, and it wasn't we, that is, the vestry. It was we, the annual meeting, it was the congregation that said that because it was the congregation that ultimately heard that and approved that budget. Um, so how'd we do? Well, here we are. Turns out, in spite of all the concerns that that was an overly optimistic revenue projection, we came darn close. If you get within a couple thousand dollars of an almost $400,000 budget, you're doing well. You can't, you can't pick nits <clears throat> with that. Um, so our net income, Net revenue. Our expenses then came in under. Now, remind you, at the beginning of the year, we didn't know how much it was going to cost to run the building. We knew most every other expense. We were guessing at how much the maintenance was going to be, how much were the utilities going to be. It was going to be better, we thought, than it was before because the insulation, for example, is so much better. <coughs> Not a lot of other, you know, leaky faucets and such that you have to repair, so you, you might project that that's not going to be a big expense, but you don't really know until you're actually living with it, right? And we never had air conditioning before. And we never had air conditioning before, so that was a big guess. How much is the AC going to add to our utility bill in the summer? And we have a great sexton. And we, have, we do. We do. We, we, knew, what, we knew what his costs were going to be, but we didn't necessarily know what his work was going to be. Right. Yeah. Yes, sir. I don't think there was any insulation in the building either in the walls. No, so we, so we knew we would have some savings, how much we didn't know. We knew we had some added expenses because of things like AC, but we didn't know what that was going to add. So how is that all going to play out? We made guesses. We made a lot of guesses. And guess what? Appropriately, we were conservative. And we came in better than budgeted. So our expenses were less, revenue was very close. So we ended the year, instead of a $28,000 deficit, only a $19,000 deficit. Yay! Thank you! <laughs> That's where the crowd was. Yay. Come on, this is a story. Remember, this is a story. All right, let's see the details. So there's the details. Plate and sustained giving actually came in above our projection. Pledge income came in pretty close. A little bit disappointing, maybe. But, you know, people come and go. We had some people who died that year. We had some people who left or moved and, and other reasons. Um, so we still did pretty well, not as well as we had hoped, but we got better there. Um, we got better here. Challenge grant came in, of course. We budgeted. That was what the real number was. I said 10 to change before. I don't know why. Um, Trinity Foundation came in a little better, but you know, pretty much what they said they did. And then we had this uh, summertime and the giving is easy. We got to this point. We said, that's good enough. Let's not keep singing. <laughs> People say, <laughs> so our net revenue again came in very close in total, and our expenses were less. And then we come to 2016. Now we're getting closer to where we are today. Beginning of 2016, we did the same thing. Revenue continues, but I want to point out we don't have that special $19,000 gift. We don't have that challenge grant. Well, that's $30,000 right there. That's $30,000 gone from income. And yet we project close to the same. OK, I'm guessing some people are going overly optimistic. Anybody care to raise a hand? <laughs> OK. Our expenses. We said, you know, we did pretty well that first year, but we know there's some other things coming up, so we, we bumped up our expenses a little bit. <clears throat> Insurance always goes up, for example. We know that. Um, other expenses as well. Uh, so we still projected, again, the $28,000 deficit. But I remind you, we always planned on that that year. Always, we, from at least January of 2015, we planned to run a deficit this year. Sometimes here, with alarming regularity, ooh, how can we do this? We're running a deficit. We plan to. It was a strategic choice then, and until such time as we revisit that, it remains the strategic choice that we made. And we plan to do so through 2017. Any questions on that? All right, how are we doing? 
Well, I mean, again, I, I'm sorry, before we get to how we're doing now, again, a comparison. So in, pledge income, we project a big increase because that was the response last year when we asked for pledges for 2016. Plate and sustained giving, increasing. A little, but we did pretty well last year. Special gifts and overpaid pledges. Now this is where is a, there was, um, you know, this is what Joan, Joan does the tracking, right? She knows how much people give, nobody else does. Um, and she said, I think we can expect that some people are gonna pay more, because they always do. <clears throat> But we aren't going to have that $19,000 gift. So it's a lot less than it was the year before. That challenge grant, it's not there at all. That's a big hole. Trinity Foundation is going to get $10,000, they said. And then we said, we're going to need more mystery money, aren't we? That's the only way we're going to get this down to $28,000. Is there weeping and wait, wait, wailing and gnashing of teeth yet? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> oh. We're waiting for the other shoe. Because we're, so off we're waiting for the other shoe. Let me see. Are, yeah. ready for the, are we ready for the other shoe? Yeah. Are we ready for the other shoe? I'm confused. Somebody say they're confused. Well, you're talking about 2016. That's that's the budget. That's the year we're already living in. That's we're right. In. Okay, I'm just. Uh, this is all back. This is all still kind of background. Yeah. So the 2015 <laughs> actual, the 2016 budget. And this is just the detail. Okay, a little bit of detail. Budget, okay. This is how we got to twenty-eight thousand dollars. So we will get to a seventeen. No, we're not going to. We're going to hint at, at at seventeen, but that's as far as we're going to go. Okay. <laughs> and then there's one other thing. There's this mystery money, which turn, turned into the Count Me In appeal last summer, okay? But at the beginning of the year, we just said, we're going to have to find it somehow. All right, I want to do a little, because some people like graphics. This is it. You get pie charts. Now, they're supposed to suggest they're about the same size. This is our all of our expenses, all of our expenses. And how is it getting filled? 2015 has, this is all basically pledge income, and then the other categories fall out. This right here, this red wedge, that's the challenge grant, which is not at all in this pie at all, even though it's the same size. The other wedge to pay attention to is this, this wedge here, which was that special gift plus excess pledges, and it's just excess pledges this year, so this wedge here you'll see is, is smaller. Um, this here is the extra money, the mystery money, Okay, so the summertime, the count me in, and then I think this wedge right here is the foundation gift. And then these two wedges are those, those surplus incomes, sustained giving, late income, but most of it is, is pledging, which went from, I think, in this budget, 71% to this budget, 74%. Yes, ma'am? Um, is there any money in there from shared maintenance? Not technically. That's kind of funny because shared maintenance actually offsets expenses. So it doesn't show up as income. And that goes back to the fact that we pay assessments on income. So if we took it in as rent, then we have to pay an assessment on it. We can legitimately, so to the extent that the shared maintenance is offsetting our costs, simply deduct it from what our costs are. So that's a, that's a great that's a great question. In fact, so the property costs that we're gonna we're gonna talk about again here in a moment are net costs. So it's the whole cost less what the shared maintenance offsets. Okay, does that make sense? Yes, but I'm wondering if the shared maintenance really uh, uh, covers the costs. Well, not entirely of everything. No, I mean we don't we don't we don't get a free ride because somebody else is paying our bills, but we have help. Um, so that's your, that's your pie chart. The, 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 the net upshot is that even as some of these lesser wedges become smaller or go away, we're still able to fill the pie. That's really what that's trying to show. Okay, so again, this is just a reminder. This is the budget, 2015 actual, 2016 budget. And here are the details. There I have property net, Marie, to your point. So $75,000 is what we budgeted for the property it cost us this year less the help we get from other sources, including uh, Family Kitchen, who pays a shared maintenance agreement. 
Okay. Um, and we knew that worship and music were going to increase because we were going to rely a lot on volunteer and other reduced rate help, primarily from Betsy and Dawn last year. And we knew we needed to move past that. Uh, and by the way, thank you, Betsy. It's lovely to see you as always. <laughs> So we expected that to increase again, and there are some other, you know, increases along the way. Um, and this kind of, you know, insurance, for example, gets kind of lost in all the all the details. But we're not giving you the details. Okay, here we are. Finally, where are we now? That's our budget for the year. This is through November, approximately. Jan really pushed to give me any numbers at all to share with you today. And we're not exactly sure we've checked them carefully, because Bob does that with her normally. But we're pretty sure that those numbers are right, and they're, they're at least close. So through um, November, revenues, which is pretty close for where we should be at this time of the year, especially when we know historically December giving is always stronger than it is other months of the year. And that's not true just at Trinity. That's true in every church, and frankly, in the whole not-for-profit world. December giving is always stronger than the rest of the year. Our assessments, of course, are a percentage, so our net is, is within striking distance of where we targeted to be. Our expenses probably aren't going to do anything terribly funny before the end of the year, so we're probably going to come in about where we think we are in expenses, maybe even a little below. So my guess is, the end of the year, this number gets smaller than it is now, and lesser than the, the 28. Yay! If, Yay! if yeah. you continue to do your work. <laughs> yes, sir. If it's less, do we have to take less out of reserves then? Yes. Absolutely. And that out of that accumulated reserve, because that's what's going to cover it. The accumulated reserve is what covers um, any, any deficit. So here's the details. Again, about where you'd hope to be with pledge income right now. In fact, ex uh, stronger than, than um, some people expect. I think it's at 98% of the 11, 12, okay, 11 out of 12 months. Calculate that, and we're at 98%. I think that's nearly unheard of for, for a church to be near the end of November. Yay. Yay. So, and that, that includes, includes some losses. I mean, some people have left and moved away and or died, and we're still there. And I'd like to say, as you look at the plate and sustained giving, that was the one place I was optimistic this year, and it didn't turn out. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the year's not over. The year's not over. Um, we'll explain why. Well, we think what's going on there <laughs> is because more people last year pledged. There are fewer people not previously pledging to continue to give without right. pledges. Okay, so what helps one column, what, what helps one row in this case may have hurt the other. Live and learn. That's what we do. Actually, it doesn't hurt. No, it's, an, it's still good. It's still good. Yeah, but in, but in terms of accounting, it it just makes things a little bit. Better. <coughs> um, so we still have people who have been overpaying. So we're doing better than, than budgeted for the whole year, and we still got another month to go. Um, Trinity Foundation gave, and our Count Me In campaign actually exceeded. And some of that benefit of the Count Me In campaign may be up here, because if people are giving, if, if they're overpaying their pledge because of the, camp, of the appeal, but they didn't tell us, then assume they're going to go up there and get lost to us. So, make sense? Um, and so at the end of the day, and again, expenses we talked about, I have just taken out one thing because the, the stewardship appeal that we did this year is different than we did it in the past, and so it's cost us more, and we're actually going to transfer in $4,500, which doesn't show there. So I know before we start that our, our, our numbers are, are going to be lower. That's just cheating a little bit. That's not an easy thing, Father Jay. You don't put out an appeal. For, it, for any church to have to go through. I thought it went very well. Hats off. Yeah, hats Great. off. Yeah. Um, 
We're not going to talk a lot about it, but remember there's the other character in our, in our play, our story, that's the balance sheet. Okay? These are non-operating expenses that we absorbed this year. For, oh, and, and, you know, Junior Warden, Karen Housewell, nice to see you. Yay. And Tom Baxter heads up the uh, Building and Grounds Committee, uh, working with Karen, and a lot of people who do, all, do a lot of work. I saw Tom, I think, out shoveling earlier today. That's, he's not here because that's what he does. Um, no, he's singing. Yeah, oh, he's singing. No, never mind. He's not. He was shoveling earlier. Now he's, now he's singing. Uh, so these are some of the projects that we, we, we finished off that comes out of a different fund entirely. This is not an operating cost. This is out of our bank, our bank accounts, okay? our savings and such. $6,200 for the contractor to finish up work. $30,000 because we put new heating systems in over next door in the upper and lower levels on the north side. Okay. The, uh, how, they were seven, 1970s vintage furnaces. They couldn't get parts for them anymore. They were really f fearful they were just going to die on us someday and we couldn't do anything. So we had to replace those. Uh, heat pump for uh, the lower office area. Um, we did some exterior painting, fire detection extension, which is still got $4,200 yet to pay. Maybe we'll get it done before the end of the year. Maybe not. <laughs> Final inspection due any moment now. <laughs> we have new, out, new outside signage um, and um, new exterior lighting, which, by the way, looks lovely at night if you haven't seen it. Yeah, it does. So all those projects. Um, so just a quick snapshot of, of our bank accounts and other assets. Again, this is the stuff you, if you transfer it to your home situation, this is the, what you, what you, what your house is worth that you don't yet owe on it. Okay, this is what you have in the bank, your savings accounts, your retirement funds, whatever else is in your portfolio. This is our portfolio. Two million dollars in real estate and non-parish funds, which is to say money we can't touch because you can't sell or borrow against your real estate. Could technically, but it's not worth going into because it's just too hard and painful and it's not smart if you can avoid it. And we can. And then a million dollars in all other funds. Actually, I said 74, 26. Can you better check me on that? Because I actually forgot to do the math on that. Thank you. All right, it's, it's in the ballpark. It's in the ballpark. Um, building maintenance fund a year ago had 165-ish thousand dollars. But because of all the work we've done, that's where we tapped it. So all those other projects I listed off, they got paid out of there. Okay, memorial funds, designated outreach funds. I'm going to come back and just give you just a little bit of information on that in a second. And then there's this, this pocket here, which is actually money the best you can spend. The others we can't really spend, but the best you could spend this tomorrow if we felt like we needed to, two hundred and seventy thousand dollars. What are you touching me for? <laughs> Plus those reserve funds. Remember, they were eighty-four thousand dollars and change at the beginning of, of twenty fifteen. We thought they might be two thirds depleted by the end of this year. We're actually doing pretty well. Yay! Yay! Yay. Yay. All right. Just a small point. This designated outreach funds. $264,000 roughly is in family kitchen. Obviously, we can't use that for operations. That's family kitchen money. And it was probably given specifically for family kitchen. If somebody gives money for a top for a project, you, we are obliged to use it for that and nothing else. Similarly, from Vegas, another $21,000 currently in the bank. Okay. That's a little bit of all right, isn't that's it? That's a lot of all right. Yeah. That's all right. But that's the kind of money that's that's in there. And there's a lot of other things. There's you know designated funds and other sorts of things. Flower offering, you know, flower for flowers for those that we use for Christmas. That's in there. And there's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. We're not going to bore you with the details unless you want it. No, we're not going to bore you. Even if you want it. Um, okay. That's where we are now. Where are we going? Best guesses. And that's all I want to say. We're not going to give you the budget today. The vestry meets on Tuesday. Two o'clock, by the way, if I forget to say it. It's, it was a change on Friday because of the weather concerns. We decided meet, let's meet during the daytime instead of the evening like we normally do. So if you have business for the vestry, you better come at two. If you come at 6.30, it's going to be dark. Um, but it, um, the vestry hasn't even heard from the, the, the finite. The vestry hasn't received this report. You know more than the vestry technically does at this point. Unless you're on the vestry. Um, 
And Bill um, and the Finance Committee met uh, on Friday. They've done some more work. Um, and, and we're going to talk about how we're actually going to come up with a budget. We're not there yet. But best guesses. We know that most expenses are probably going to be held with the exception of, of increased expenses in music that we're going to have to pay this year. And, of course, insurance is going up. We don't have any choice about those things at this point. I suppose we could can April and just sing a cappella. I don't think that's a good plan, but it would be good. I mean, but, you know, technically we don't really have any choice. Um, and then I want to just point out that Mark and Jan in particular have not received any merit or cost of living increases in at least the last couple of years. And I don't know how long, or how long before that it might go. I'm guessing it's been at least three or four years. And that's kind of a problem. So, um, we expect some increases in expenses next year. Um, I remind you, per our plan in January of 2015, we still allow for and anticipate a $28,000 deficit next year. That's not a problem. It's a plan. Um, but we expect to get there without those special gifts, without a transfer of the challenge grant that was roughly $30,000 in 2015, or without extra appeals and fundraisers, which were between budgeted between fifteen and seventeen thousand dollars last couple years. If we can do that, the crowd goes wild. Yay! Yay! And that's the end of the story. story. Except you write the next chapter. Yes, ma'am. I, I just want to say something around. historical. You know, I was on the vestry when we started the family kitchen. Mm -hmm. We had a ten thousand dollar grant from American Express to they were giving out $10,000 grants for hunger issues. And uh, we went with several other churches and we decided that we would start the family kitchen here in this parish hall. And the fellow that had written, for, had written the grant did not like that idea. He wanted to have a freestanding soup kitchen. Um, so he sent the money back. So we started the family kitchen with this much. Okay? And the public health laws were different then. People, you know, women in, with insensible shoes brought jello molds and <laughs> casseroles. And we started, that's how the family kitchen was started. And now look at the budget for the family kitchen. Look at the number of people that it serves. So when we were really despondent on the vestry back then, uh, Ron Bott said to us, is God broke? He said, if we're doing God's work, then the money will. Don't go out and slash your wrist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the epilogue. Thank you. For <laughs> so that's our story. Um, more to be more to be revealed. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, Jed, what I really like to see is I see next door um, an untapped asset. There's like seven offices, and there's that big mm -hmm. room upstairs. And if we could get more people in there for shared maintenance, that would really beef up our help our budget yep. and bring in more income so I'd really like the vestry to look into that okay I, and that, that, I'll just quickly respond and say the vestry yeah. has looked into that more to the point Jan's been working that so in, in, in actuality our, our shared maintenance this year exceeds our budget we're doing better because in fact we have those things happening you don't see it a lot yeah. the fireside room is being used yesterday afternoon for example by somebody else um, which surprised me because I thought I was all by myself. No, I wasn't. Uh, they, there was a group over there. Ben Zen comes in um, at least weekly. Uh, we have a number. We have. Uh, I, call, I call him ben. the Chris Kringle. And the city of Ben. City of Ben has been doing a lot of workshops in this building. They, they've, they've done it and using our, our slide projector and stuff to do some of the planning. Uh, we've had other groups come in. Uh, we actually... I, it doesn't look like it. We have a lot of utilization. We still have more opportunities. I don't want to take yeah. away from that. Yeah, I think um, but I also want to hold up the, 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 the good news that we're actually doing better than we expected to do this year, even though we lost the Lutheran Counseling Services this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, they, they moved something. into their own, yeah. their own places. And, yeah. that was and, and one thing on this is we had a property manager come in last year and look at the poss possibilities of using this space. And there's a couple of issues going on over there. Uh, there's accessibility issues because you can't, there's no wheelchair access to the top. Close it off. There's the, 
And I'll put it this way because from that perspective it is an issue. Family kitchen is an issue. You know, Lutheran services who had the offices down on the lower floor were very concerned because their clients didn't want to walk through the people who were there from the family kitchen. And the property manager had the same issues. So there are probably, there's definitely some possibility of getting some more revenue out of that building. I don't want to say it's not, but it's not quite as simple as why don't we just rent it out. Uh, they told us, for example, the office is on the top floor. You, you would have to rent them out to someone who doesn't have a, that basically is there using it as an office where no one's going to come in because there's bad accessibility to it. So I don't want to trivialize the whole issue, but there's real problems with using that building. Well, in other words, renting it out is a problem. Running it out is a problem. It's not easy. But it's, being, <coughs> it's being used a lot. If you're around here during the week, that building's got folks going in and out of it all the time. And, and, it, and it's, it's interesting because I've said, well, why, you know, how are we getting any money out of this? And the number of people coming in spending relatively small amounts of money to rent the spaces really adds up after a while. And shared maintenance on St. Helens Hall pays for all of the utilities. This over here too. Uh, I, I, no. I, that might be, but I don't know that for a fact. I know for a fact at St. Helens that shared maintenance is paying all the utilities. That's doesn't true. cover the insurance, doesn't cover the cost of the sexton's time, the administrative time, but really, you know, Shared maintenance is paying a big percentage of the costs over there. So you feel good about that, Bill? Oh, yeah. 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 I yeah, mean, but we can get more out of that building, yeah. but it's not as bad as it might seem. Uh, so. yeah.